In this video, I will be showing you the full history of Murder Mystery 2. I'll be showing you what MM2 was like back in 2014, as well as where it's headed for the future. This has been two years in the making, so I hope you enjoy it. When Murder Mystery was released, it became an instant hit, becoming the top game within a month of its release, being based off the Gmod Murder Mystery games that were popular back then. During the early stages of Murder Mystery, there were only a few weapons that were available to get during its initial launch. These would be called the Classic Weapons, or now known as the Vintage Weapons, although the Classic T would not be an official name until the first boxes would come out. These weapons were obtainable through points, with golden being the most expensive. The default set was also quite different back then, with the knife and gun both being completely different from how it is now. Each vintage knife had power like haste or ghost, but some of the vintage guns would get a special sound to go along with them. Examples of this being blood giving a 10% speed boost for every kill you get, and America having a sound with fireworks sound effect. Now if you want, you can pause right now and see what all the classic weapons did back then. America was actually an item that could be bought with Robux. Another cool Game Pass added at this point was the Custom Faces Game Pass. One thing you need to keep in mind that for the entire life of Murder Mystery, not to be confused with Murder Mystery 2, that was just Nick doing all the maps, knives, and coding until Murder Mystery became Murder Mystery 2. There was only one game mode and worked exactly like Hardcore Mode in Murder Mystery 2, where everyone had a set nickname and set faces unless you bought the face game pass that still works to this day. Now, starting with the maps, starting in February of 2014 to June of 2014, the first ever murder mystery lobby was just dark space with walking area and a board with three panels for voting and tips for the murderer, innocence, and sheriffs, the current video being played for reference. On April 11th, 2014, all servers on murder mystery were hacked by an anonymous user. The hack froze the timer in-game, generating lots of complaints and hatred, causing Murder Mystery to fall off the top played games within minutes. On the 12th of April 2014 at 1am EST, Nicholas would take down all the remaining hack servers and fix the issue. Fun fact! Murder Mystery reached 10 million visits on April 27th, 2014 and would hit 20 million visits on December 23rd, 2014, 8 months after reaching the prior milestone. Now I know it might seem small nowadays, but back then a game reaching 10 million would mean they would top tier. Now from June 2014 to December 2014, this would be a final murder mystery lobby. It was similar to a previous lobby, but instead of having tips for a murderer, innocence, and sheriffs on the walls, you could access a shop and other stuff. The biggest tragedy of murder mystery and later murder mystery 2. The, mur the murder mystery tragedy would be the data loss glitch. The data loss glitch was an unintended minor tragedy which occurred on December 29th, 2014. Approximately 50 people lost their items and their data, losing all their effects, radios, and most importantly, their weapons. This occurred due to a code error in murder mystery scripts, and after realizing what had happened, Nicholas would give away a gift as an apology. This would be the corrupt knife, and would become the most sought after weapon in murder mystery, and later murder mystery 2. Back then, Corrupt was equivalent to Nick's Scythe, where very few people had Corrupt and was going for thousands of weapons, something that was nearly impossible back then. Now, this was a very basic game, but it would continue to grow bigger in 2015, with Murder Mystery becoming Murder Mystery 2 in 2015. Now, I know I just said that Murder Mystery became MM2 in 2015, but the first official lobby for the game was made on December 14th, 2014, but since it was so temporary, I'm not going to count that as a start point. The lobby has a small cobblestone area with snows and trees surrounding it. There was also a small wooden cabin for voting. First mystery boxes were created during this time with a knife and gun box. Since the lobby was so temporary it got removed around a week later with the boxes moving on to the next update. The second lobby update. This lobby was the second MM2 lobby with you spawning on a bridge with water underneath. It also had different colored brick buildings, with the lobby being surrounded by trees and buildings. This lobby was added in January of 2015 and would be removed in October of 2015. Fun fact, number 3. There was a case called the MLG Crate, but it was made into a rainbow box as Nick did want to get copyrighted. The godly was heat and was the only weapon from the box not to be removed after Nick removed the box. The crate had a Doritos logo on it and had a cool promotion as shown above. The second last lobby update. This was the third ever change to the lobby, with this MM2 lobby being smaller than the current MM2 lobby. 
It houses around and adds for the Elite Pack, as well as a very small room for voting. It was added in October of 2015 and would be removed, and would be removed two years later in October of 2017. This is the lobby most old players remember at, with it being the most prominent. The first ever Halloween event. The Halloween event 2015 would be the first ever event in MM2 history. There were new features such as a new lobby, new skins that could only be acquired during the Halloween event, and brand new challenges. I'm going to break down everything from what the new lobby looked like to what the new challenges were. Though you can see all of what I'm about to say in the video above. As a side note, credit for this and any other videos will be in the description. What the lobby looked like. When you spawned there were pumpkins all around the lobby as well as an orange sky. There was a board that said take part in the new Halloween event and earn awesome rewards such as coins, knife skins, and gun skins. How were these exclusive skins earned? Bingo. The game bingo, not the phrase bingo. It worked exactly like bingo. Each square had a challenge that had to be complete. Completing a challenge reward players with a knife slash gun skin. Each rule of murder, sheriff, and innocent had three challenges of varying difficulty. There were a total of nine challenges creating a 3x3 three three grid. If all 9 challenges were completed, the Spider Godly was awarded to the player. There were no crates, no packs, only a bingo game giving the prizes that you can see on screen right now. It is unknown how long the event lasted, but it would change from the Halloween event to a Christmas event, which would be even bigger than the Halloween event. This was the second ever event to take place at Murder Mystery 2. This event was primarily collecting gifts and exchanging them for weapons. Like Halloween, I'm going to describe what the lobby looked like and what you had to do to obtain all the weapons. When you, would em ent when you would enter Murder Mystery 2, it showed a lobby with snow, elves, gifts, candy canes, santas, and snowflakes falling down from above the lobby. The Nicholas Fountain was replaced with a Christmas tree and would become the tradition for all Christmas events moving forward. It was a billboard that would tell you to participate in this event to get exclusive weapons. On the Elite board, it showed a new weapon called the Green Elite, obtained by buying the Elite Game Pass. Now, how would you have obtained said weapons? In order to obtain the cool weapons, you need to get the gifts. But how would I have gotten gifts back then? Well, gifts were obtained by giving 10 coins, so one round was equal to 1 gifts, and elite players would get 3 gifts for 2 rounds. In terms of weapons, it showed a godly knife named Xmas that would have costed 75 gifts. On crates, it was a knife and gun box, where you could unbox Christmas skins, and each crate would cost 30 gifts. There were also 7 new godlies at this event. Sugar and Candy being the box godlies, Xmas, Chill, Handsaw, and Green Luger, and Red Luger being the godlies that could be obtained with gifts, Handsaw, Chill, Green Luger, Red Luger being added assumably later in the event though. After each event, the lobby would go back to its pre-lobby look. First ever Valentine's update. Okay, as an editor's note, when I say first and final, I mean the Valentine's update was more had more than one item, and while you could consider the 2021 Heartblade a Valentine's update, I'm not going to include it because it only had one item, while this had six plus a pet. In February of 2016, there was the first and only Valentine's update. It was a very minor event compared to Halloween and Christmas, only having a few weapons and pet being sold in the shop. This is where a heart, the heart pet came from, being only 400 coins and the most expensive of the items. Alright, so right before the Easter update, I'm going to add that exclusive packs were table right before the Easter updates, these being the core 4 item pack that many remember as the original item packs. These being Clockwork Pack that came out on February 9th, 2016. This pack had the Clockwork Knife, the Steambird Pet, and the Gear Storm Effect. This pack was the first ever item pack that included more than one item, and the America Classic being the first. The 8 bit item pack came out on February 21st, bringing the Pixel Knife, the Pet Phoenix, and one of the rarest effects being Bitsplosion. The pixel knife was actually not made off of Minecraft, but being based off something that Roblox has made, contrary to popular belief. The Viral 1 until June would be the futuristic pack, having some of the coolest weapons being Virtual, Blaster, and Electro Pet, this one just being cool with nothing really special to it. Easter update. Same thing as last time, while well, technically a 2021 Shop Godly Egg Blade should be considered an Easter update, it only had one Godly for a box where this one was actually called an Easter update and actually had more than one item. In April of 2016, being the first and last Easter update to happen where Easter themed items were sold in the shop just like Valentine's. Only 5 weapons were sold with Tulip being the most expensive. And now we get to the final item pack for 2016 being the America pack. Open to the public on July 2nd, this pack had Old Glory Knife, the Amera Laser Gun and the Sammy Pet being created for the 4th of July. MM2 would collaborate with Space Tycoon, creating the Cotton Candy Knife, being only obtainable by getting 10 million coins in the game. 
only 14,927 people would get this knife legitimately and this event lasted until September. The exact drop date of this event is lost time, although we know it started in June because that's when all the tutorials were made on it. Fun fact number 4. On September 14th, 2016, the YouTube channel known as JD was created and their first video was created on the 16th. The channel consists of Joven, Thex, and Dylan, DD1147. They were good friends with Nicholas with DD being a game tester, a former knife creator, and Joven being a map builder. Dylan had created the skins for first Xmas update and the first Halloween event. Murder Mystery 2 would go back to normal from July to October with nothing major happening until the next event. Halloween of 2016 Halloween came back in October of 2016 and lasted until about early November. This year, Nick introduced candy coins, these being the currency of the event and the first ever change to coins for a special event. The lobby would get the same treatment as last year with pumpkins everywhere and an orange sky, with Nick's fountain having green water, most likely acid, and Nick himself wearing a green pumpkin. Another notable note is that all the windows were boarded up. There was a new box that for 100 candies you could unbox it. If you didn't want to unbox your candies, you could exchange your candies for coins. One candy was equal to one coin. In the box, there was a new godly called Hollow's Edge, with nothing else being added to the event, but Dylan did unbox two of the Hollow's Edges, so that's a pretty cool fun fact. The Christmas Event of 2016 the Christmas event of 2016 was an event that took place in late December and ended in late January. People said it was much better than the Halloween event because it included crafting. The lobby would also get the same treatment as last year with snow on the ground, elves, and a huge Santa at the back with JD sitting and having coffee in the back of the lobby. There was also a huge Christmas tree in the center once more. The actual event. To put it simply, you would salvage unboxable weapons for blue tokens. The better the weapon, the more tokens you got when you salvaged an knife during this event. There were many radios that were available to get, as well as some amazing effects, but there, were, but there was only one godly and one ancient weapon given out, these being ice dragon and flames, with flames later being changed to a godly tier. The Duping Glitch of May 2017 The Duping Glitch was one of the major duping events in this game's history. The glitch would cause some of the oldest weapons to lose value, one of the sass being corrupt. This glitch started with the elf knife that was made for the Xmas 2015 event. This glitch would lay dormant until someone eventually tried it out with other weapons and had spread the word. Once this glitch was discovered, the word would spread fast and soon items were being duplicated left and right. Many people quit MM2 due to their items becoming worthless, with most of the people quitting being the biggest traitors. This understandably angered lots of people as the players who knew the duping method were referring to it as the power. Many trading servers for Murder Mystery 2 were temporarily closed due to this. Many people with an inventory of 100 of any godly weapon were being targeted and banned. This is also where the Corrupt Knife would be ruined until it made its return in 2020, but would still not be as powerful as it once was. This would continue until 2018 where the glitch was patched, although an exploit would come in and ruin everything once more. Halloween in 2017 The 2017 Halloween event was an event that began on October 27th, 2017 and ended on November 14th, 2017. Nicholas redecorated the entire lobby for Halloween. There were many new features in this event, but the most obvious one is the new Halloween lobby. Nicholas redecorated the entire lobby for Halloween. By Nicholas, I mean Xylik, of course. The candies made their return replacing coins, similar to Halloween 2016. You could speak to the mysterious traveler to trade in the 100 candies from the Halloween event 2016, they would convert it into a misc item, and you would receive Hollow's Blade, a godly knife. Although you were not able to trade in candies that were from the 2017 event. Another feature that was completely new was the entire game setting was turned to night. But the biggest part of this update were the new weapons. The update included a new game pass which included the battle axe, a godly knife, bat, an effect, and the mysterious traveler, a godly pet. Like the Halloween event 2016, this event included the Halloween box, which you can unbox for 100 candies to obtain the Halloween exclusive weapons. In the Halloween box, it was the godly pumpkin. The pumpkin godly was oversized due to a bug, but it made for some funny moments, so I guess it's fine. A code was also added for this event, being HW2017, and it gave a regular pumpkin, but this code would ultimately be useless as Nick gave out the same pumpkin as a free tier for 2018. The Christmas event 2017 was an event that took place from late December to February 27th, 2018. During this event, salvaging knives would, be, would give rewards, like 2015 and 2016 include normal materials and parts of toys. Each time a knife was salvaged, a part of a toy was obtained. Toys were not craftable until four pieces were obtained. 
After each round, though mostly common and uncommon, a part of a toy had a chance of being given to the player. Once toys were obtained and crafted with wrapping paper, they were able to be exchanged in Santa's workshop. Wrapping paper was obtained by either buying it or being awarded it after each round. Boxes of paper were to be salvaged. They were tradable if not used, becoming mask items. There are six kinds of wrapping paper, some being obtainable by coins and others being bought with gems, but essentially, the better the wrapping paper is, the more valuable the toy is, meaning more items obtained from exchanging. There were four godlies dropped from this event and a new elite only reward. The godlies being Frost Saber, Ice Shirt, and Snowflake from the reward. Okay, so it turns out I'm dumb. There was a winter item pack that was on sale for 1,299 Robux. It gave the Ice Shard Godly, the Ice Phoenix, and the Blizzard effect. I don't know why I didn't see this beforehand, but now I've seen it, so I'm sorry. And Winter's Edge coming from the box. There were also some great radios produced from this update, shown on screen now. This was also the first year ever to have a leaderboard, with the prize being blue candy for top 100 and gold, sil gold silver, and bronze candy versions for the top 3. So I didn't explain this earlier for simplicity's sake, but when Murder Mystery became Murder Mystery 2, all the old maps were removed and replaced with new ones, and many more maps were removed in 2018 due to Roblox changes like Arthro. The current MM2 lobby. The new MM2 lobby had small differences to the prior lobby. The outside, was, the outside was a lot bigger, there was more grass and stones, as well as more rocks put outside. The build boards were bigger and had more detail added to them. The voting room became a lot bigger, it also had a balcony and a secret room. This was added as of 2018 and is still in use. There is also a lemon behind the radio billboard. Okay, editors note this was removed when Take Your Lemons left the MM2 team, but as you can see it was here originally, but it got removed in 2020 I think, sometime then. But it did used to be there, alright? The Halloween event 2018. This Halloween update Nick did something he never did before or prior. A battle pass. The battle pass was the main event having 100 tiers with almost every tier having a reward. Each tier had costed 100 candies, meaning it would cost you 999 candies to finish the event since tier 1 was free. The godly you obtained for completing the tiers was Battle Axe 2. The Halloween box may have returned once more but with a special twist. It had contained two godlies, the Bone Blade and the Chroma Bone Blade, a never before seen variant of the regular Bone Blade that needed an ungodly amount of luck to a box. People would go crazy for this exclusive Rainbow Godly. Batwing would be the second ever obtainable ancient for the brand new game pass, being only one weapon rather than a pet effect in a godly. Batwing was an ancient tier that used to only belong to Nicholas. The Batwing was put on sale at the cost of 2,499 Robux, with Nick's scythe being added as a substitute for Batwing. This weapon would be given to close members of Nick's team, with seven people owning it to this day. And yes, there was a candy exchange, with one candy being worth one coin, just like prior years. The leaderboard also made its return, but this time for Halloween, where 100 players got ranked based on how many candies they had bought or grinded during the event. The top 3 players would get the same treatment as the top 3 candy owners getting the exclusive gold, silver, bronze, and hollow's edge, and with the top 100 players getting the red, hollow's edge. Nicholas had made the entire community go crazy over Chroma Bone Blade, but would he do the same thing for the Christmas event? Simple answer, he was going to blow up all the socks in the world. The Christmas event 2018. The, lum the Lumberyard was brought into MM2 being similar to a Halloween 2018 event. There were 100 tiers, one tier was unlocked by using logs. Logs could be bought for 60 gems or in the normal way. For free to play players, logs were unlocked every time you would grow a tree. But how do I grow a tree you might ask? When salvaging a weapon you would get ornaments. Hanging ornaments on your tree would get it to grow. But every time you exchange ornaments for tokens, it took 10 minutes until you could add more for exchange. You could buy fertilizer for 50 gems, and this would immediately skip the 10 minutes you had for a full tree. Once you had completed the entire battle pass, you would be awarded with the Frostbird Godly Pet. And yes, you got a tree for free in the lobby, but you can see that in the video. The lobby. The lobby was revamped once more to add more snow on the ground and more snowflakes falling from the sky. You could see lots of Christmas trees with ornaments everywhere because other players could see your tree and you could see theirs. There was an item pack that gave Icewing the third ever agent that was obtainable to the public and Nick would put up for 2,499 Robux, only giving Icewing. In the box it was Gingerblade and Chroma Gingerblade. There was also Ginger Luger but in order to create this godly you had to unbox a Gingerblade and then Luger and then salvage both to create the godly gun. The leaderboard for this year was the most amount of tokens spent on ornaments, and people who got 100, 1 to 100 got blue sugar, 
and people who got the top three would get the bronze, silver, or gold version of sugar. This would be the final pay to win leaderboard, but I'll explain that soon. The Ice Wing Glitch this, The Ice Wing Glitch was caused by a few buyers who had bought the Ice Wing Pack and somehow duped it. Nicholas found it almost right away and removed the game pass. Many glitched Ice Wing still exist to this day. The dupers were banned, and anyone who bought this item would lose any value the weapon could have had. Now we get to the biggest update in MM2 history, in terms of a complete revamp with the complete GY change, changed maps, a brand new map, plus emotes and crafting. The entire inventory was revamped, adding tabs and a lot of quality of life changes that were way overdue. Lots of chroma variants were added to classic boxes, quickly becoming the most sought after weapons in Murder Mystery 2, until duping would make its return in a bigger way than anyone could expect. The Halloween Event 2019 This event started on October 27th, 2019 and ended on November 16th, 2019. The lobby had been changed with the voting room looking like a mansion, monsters like IT, zombies, and a skeleton holding the corrupt knife, and well, pumpkins everywhere, I mean everywhere. Another cool thing added to this lobby was a movable spider on a spider's web. The battle pass would also make its return, but with a twist. It would only have 30 tiers, but the final tier would cost the most. Once reach once reaching the final tier, you would encounter the Traveler. The Traveler would explain that he would give you the ancient Elderwood Scythe for 80,000 candies, making a key emphasis that an ancient weapon was supposed to be difficult to get. Nicholas would get lots of backlash for his choice, as people explained that it was too hard of a challenge to complete. But this was not the only thing Nicholas would get backlash for. The leaderboard would also make its return, but rather than people being able to pay their win to top 3 spots, you actually had to collect candies in rounds to rank. This would result this would result in hundreds of explorers raiding the board, ruining other chances with a very fast script. Nicholas had to solve one of these problems, and that's what spawned part 2 to this event. Now, part 2 for Nicholas added super candies, and these candies were on fire and gave 5 candies when collected, speeding up every round. Everyone would also get a coin bag of 60 candies that held each round to make it easier. Daily challenges were also introduced so people who hadn't gotten every tier would get an extra few tiers every day for completing random challenges. But despite this, many people did not collect the 8,000 candies and would never get the Elderwood Scythe, the first ever custom ancient. In the box, it was the Elderwood Revolver to make a very nice set. And assuming you had completed the entire pass and obtained the scythe, you'd get an opportunity to get a matching radio for another 5k candies. And here it is on screen, and in the midst of this chaos, the ghostly pack existed, and it costed 17,000. 1700 Robux, but unlike prior years, it had a godly knife, a godly pet, and an exclusive effect, ethereal. Once the event ended and the top 100 players were finalized, some undeserved, they would get their weapons. A few weeks later, being the blue Elderwood for the top 100, and the top 30 players would get their gold, silver, and bronze variant. But soon, another event would rise and give people a run for their money, literally. The Christmas event 2019. It began on December 23rd, 2019 and ended, and ended on January 13th, 2020. The event features some of the regular things like a leaderboard event, a new lobby, and as usual, a game pass. But some of the newest features of this event would be the gifting center, St. Nick's challenge, and the brand new workshop map. Let's start with the lobby. Lobby got a completely new design, but because I've already explained a hundred lobbies, I'm gonna let you guys look at JD while I explain all the other cool things of this event. Now this event brought the tiers back once more, having 30 tiers and the final tier having the log chopper for 70,000 tokens, being tiered as an ancient with the minty radio right behind it for 5k. The Christmas box also made its return with minty as the godly. Now to throw in another fact, this is where I don't have a use with start doing all the events and leaderboard items. A new map was added being called Workshop based off Santa's Workshop. This map had an elf transformer and would join both 2020 and 2021 events as Xmas only maps. The gifting center was the newest feature for this event, allowing you to give gifts to others, ranging from a common to godly or chroma. Although it was quite rare that you would give somebody a godly. Though there was an exclusive reward if you would give 100 gifts to 100 players. This would be the Luger King. There was a pack in the shop that for 1700 Robux, giving whoever bought the Frostbite, the Frostbite effect, and now we have Santa's power. challenge where you need to obtain yeah. certain weapons yeah, random that. for everyone, and once you got all the weapons, you could. You could exchange them for Santa's magic, an example being shown on screen. Now, one of the biggest things for this event was the two leaderboards this year, one for most gifts given and one for most tokens given. 
This was the first year to ever have two leaderboards, and the leaderboard rewards were Blue Log Chopper and Blue Minty. Only 13 people ever got on both leaderboards getting the set. Okay, so from here on now, for Halloween and Christmas events for 2020 and 2021, I will just be going over new things and just generally giving a brief of the event because I, my voice, I just don't like it. It's just because I've been reading off the script for a long while and, uh, you know, JD made great videos on it. So go take a look at them and I'm just going to be briefing you. Okay, so I'm calling this season one part two. Season one part two is an unofficial name, but this was a very surprise update to everyone as everyone was expecting season two, but it was an update that gave a fix to all effects, added a new interactive map that was made by Joven, and there was also a new duo godly box, giving either light or dark bringer, and also having a chance to give the chroma variants. This would be the first ever box to hold four godly weapons in one. Other thing I need to mention here is that duping returned at around this point, duping all chroma weapons, causing them to lose all value. This was caused by a script that would lag out the server. After chroma weapons, corrupt, collectibles, and all godly weapons were targeted, eventually the script was caught by Nick and he would fix it and ban some of the biggest dupers. While the patch did not last long, Nick would find a permanent fix soon. Season 1 Part 2 add-on, again, unofficial name, but... Nicholas may post on Twitter asking everyone if they want new perks and a new code, and everyone unsurprisingly said yes. In the same week, Nicholas released two new perks and said code. New perks were called Trap and Sprint, both perks being pretty fun to use with Trap being an invisible, the trap being a, an invisible bear trap, and Sprint giving a 50% temporary speed boost. The code that Nick gave out was Combat 2 and gave Combat 2. This would be the first ever code knife since 2017. Okay, we're in 2020 Halloween. I'm gonna give you a quick brief. There was a pass, there was a box, there was a leaderboard. But the special thing about this update was Nicholas did a live event. He had a portal in the lobby stating that was be that the he had a portal in the lobby stating that the first ever MM2 live event would begin. On after a few delays in development. The portal finally happened, but sadly had lots of bugs and glitches, meaning that most people would dislike it right off the bat. The event would go without rewards for 3-4 to four days, but when they did drop rewards, we finally got the radio, aka Hollow Radio. Forgot to mention that earlier. Behind the Hollow site, there was no radio. Everyone was wondering, hey, where's the radio? That's where it was. Now, the rewards were basically giving tasks around the thing. You could get Bat Swarm and Hollow's Blaze as effects, as well as a few detailed commons. But despite his best efforts, Nicholas would get still get yelled at for his portal, with hundreds of people spamming his Discord, as well as other platforms, with the main crux of their arguments being that it was a piggy clone and was too buggy. This portal update would extend the event by another week, angering leaderboard contenders who expect their three week event, but in reality having an extra week of constant grinding. But this would not be nothing compared to how much the leaderboard contenders in 2020 Halloween would have to face. Pre-Christmas update 2020 and the Halloween labor items. Nine days before Nicholas dropped the Christmas update, he gave the community a pre-Christmas update. Staying to JD, he wanted to get everyone into a Christmas spirit, with Leibwood coming out at the same time, giving top 100 players Blue Vampire's Edge, this being the first ever time MM2 would use a Shop Godly for the Leibwood, and the Peppermint Godly being added to also get everyone hyped for the update. Alright, Christmas 2020. Same as last Christmas 2020, one thing really is that Santa's challenge gave Santa's spirit. A log, ca log cabin map was added, being a nice small map, so that was fun. And there were two shop godlies, so yeah. Brief. Brief. The Valentine's and Easter, Easter updates. The Christmas event ended on February 14th, and the Valentine's knife Heartblade was added, giving the leaderboard containers red icebreaker set as well as their top three variants. The Easter weapon Eggblade was added on April 2nd, these being the only celebrations for Easter and Valentine since 2015. But a good majority of the community don't count these as updates since they only add a Robux Godly and nothing else. These would be the only major updates until Halloween and Christmas with the, except with the exceptions of a few bug fixes here and there when needed. How duping got fixed. Another thing I need to mention here is that duping had returned in 2019 like I explained earlier. 
and it was because of the script that lagged up the server. So that meant all weapons were duped, anything that could have value was targeted, duped, and ruined. And while he did eventually get a patch, it was not a permanent fix. So the first patch happened during the Halloween 2021 event, and the current patch happened right before the Christmas update. People still think duping exists, but evidence says otherwise that's fixed. I'll explain how the anti-dupe scripts work shortly. Okay, Halloween 2021. Really the big things about this was a completely brand new overhaul of the update. There was a new mascot for the Halloween update, this being the Reaver, and him replacing Traveler having a black and green theme similar to the main weapons of this event. Farmhouse and Manor would join the map roster, but Manor was bug spawning a few candies during the event. But so far, this update was well received, and the battle pass would also boost the level for this update. Now the battle pass returned as usual, this time we got an ancient gun, the first ever one to ever happen. We've never had an ancient gun before, let alone one in tears, so this was completely brand new. Now, since 2020, Nick had made no new chroma weapon, but this changed in this update. He brought chroma candle flame and candle flame in the mystery box. First ever chroma in so long. But it would be duped so fast. We're gonna bypass the anti duping script and ruin C Chroma Candle Flame. Now, there was only one thing that ruined this event. Only one thing. And that was how long it was. It was almost five weeks of constant grinding for leaderboard players. If you were to come and see anyone who was grinding, they were begging for the event to end. They were begging testers, they were begging everyone, saying, Nick, we need this event to end. It was getting harder and harder for most to keep up, but after a long event, the top 100 would get the blue harvester. After five weeks of grinding, they'd sadly still have a bugged green trail. So rather than getting a custom blue trail for their weapons, they have a bugged green trail. Top three owners have the exact same issue. Most want to fix because of how intense their grinding was. Five weeks almost. It'd just make a lot more sense for a gold harvester to have a gold trail. And 2020 on Christmas. Finally, this is the final, this is the first year to ever have a variety of uh, item pack. You could buy one, you could buy a knife individually, a gun individually, or you could buy the item pack and get a free effect with it. For 3,030, for 3,399 Robux, you get a free un effect on top of the ice beam set. Now, the theme was swirly, so swirly axe, swirly gun, swirly blade, yep. Now, the biggest part of this event was the new anti-duping script and the leaderboard timer. The new anti-duping script in this part, Nick made a requirement to be level 10 to trade. He also had to have a trade, he also added a trade verifier that has so far kept dupers at bay from duping Chroma Swirly Gun. Oh yeah, off of Chroma, off of Chroma Candle Flame, they add Chroma Swirly Gun, which in my opinion looks nice. And two, the timer. The timer for the leaderboard was so amazing for leaderboard grinders because they knew how long they had to grind, how long it would take them, and it generally just made everything easier for the grind side of the leaderboard. But for gifting, completely different story. On the final day, the gifting leaderboard would skyrocket. People would mass gift, hard do it. Some would lose everything, but some would just barely make it. Okay, we're at the end, so I'm going to throw in a couple facts, but as it stands right now, duping is fixed, yes. An update is coming that's going to release the leaderboard items. Um, so I'm hoping this video will be dropped on the update day. If it is, I will be trying to go over. One thing I can tell you right now is that there are multiple godlies coming. Um, one was already leaked, but I don't have a U. But uh, here are a couple fun facts. Fun fact number six, MM2 was the only game to get two nerf guns while other games only got one, these being Shark Seeker and Dartbringer. Fun fact number seven, Dartbringer was actually designed by I don't have a use, but he never got a free code, but he got a free code for Shark Seeker. Fun fact number eight, I don't have a use had to rush the 2021 Halloween weapons and made, re and made redesigns for the leaderboard items. Because he did not like the look of the current Vampire's Edge items, but Nick has yet to respond with anything. The first official bronze set was given to Subscapes, being the first person to ever own an official top 3 set. 
official meaning from the same event, but if we're talking from two different events, Luna Bella was the first to ever own the top three set, owning Silver Menti and Silver Candy. Thank you so much for watching. Genuinely. I really if you would like the video, subscribe, tell your friends. It it just helps me out. This has been two years in the making, so I'm just generally happy that I'm finally done with this. I hope that I can show you guys more of what I got. Thank you.